Well, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Bible Study Alive. This week we're going to be tackling uh, sort of a bonus study uh, from last Sunday's presentation on the jewelry adornment and the Christian. And you know, anytime we do a presentation, we ought to try to keep it in about 25 minutes and you just can't cover everything in 25 minutes. So there were some questions that came up as a result that we received through Facebook and we appreciate the questions and keep them coming. And that's the topic we're going to talk about today. We're going to sort of do a short bonus lesson on tattoos and piercings. But before we do, since we're going to be opening the Word of God, we'd like to pray. And uh, as we pray, you know, think about some friends that you might like to invite to watch this. So hit that like button and share and subscribe and uh, invite people to join with us. But let's pray. Father in heaven, Thank you for this time today. We thank you for the Bible. We thank you for caring so much about us that you reveal everything to us. And we thank you for always wanting to change our lives and bring us into a, a better place, a better relationship with you. Please guide us and direct us through this study today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's take a look at the subject of tattoos and piercings. I received a question or comments through Facebook from a... Um, uh, one of our faithful viewers, and it says this. Hello, Brandon. I have a question. The Bible says not to draw attention to ourselves, like makeup, jewelry, stylish clothes, but what's alarming me is I have tattoos. What do I do now? Is God going to hold me responsible? These were ones I had done some 20 years ago. I can't get them removed. Am I going to Am I going st am I going still be in good standing with God? You have to, excuse me, I copied and pasted that. And it continues here. I wear a chain around my neck that holds the keys to my room lockbox for my meds. Is that considered jewelry? I would lose them otherwise. So it's an excellent question here. Really the question is, I have tattoos, but I've gotten them a long time ago. Is God still going to accept me? And also the question was, uh, I wear a, a, a key around my neck and that allows me access to important uh, things. Does God consider that jewelry? And these are excellent questions and I'm sure many people are wondering these same things. But before we answer directly into this, let's just backtrack a bit. And we want to see the premise of where we're coming from or where the Bible's coming from about tattoos and piercings. So let's look at Leviticus chapter 28, 19 verse 28. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. Well, the Bible says that our bodies are a temple. And because our bodies are a temple, the Bible says it is the, the place of God. And in the past, particularly in the Old Testament, the pagan cultures, they would, uh, they would engrave things in their skin. They would cut it and it would scar and it would be marks that would identify them with a particular god. They would tattoo ink into them. And all this had to do with false forms of worship. And it was all, in essence, a breakdown of, of the body. Now, I know some of you are wondering this. Why does he have the Bible there if he's reading everything off of a screen? It's all pre-programmed. But every once in a while, something comes to mind that's not on the screen. So I'm going to read this. I have this open here. It's 1 Corinthians 19, chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. So since our bodies are not our own, you may have heard people say, well, it's my body, I can do whatever I want to with it anyway. And it's actually not. Our bodies belong to God, and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit resides in us. So we want to treat our bodies as though it's a temple of God. So can we do that with tattoos and piercings? Can we treat it as such? Well, let's continue here. Since our bodies are a temple, um, what, that's exactly why the devil wants to attack our bodies, because it is a temple of God. 
And you may remember when Jesus, he was crossing the Sea of the Gadarenes or Gergesenes, depending on your translation, and he came to two demoniacs. And one was, must have been particularly off the wall, so to speak, and the, one of the Bible writers drew attention to this. And he was known for this, what it says here in Mark chapter 5, verse 5. And always, day and night, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. This demoniac, one of the things that he was particularly known for was cutting him, destroying the temple of God. And I guess the devil figures if he can't do it to us, he'll get us to do it to ourselves. And there's a very rapidly growing... Uh, I don't know if you'd call it a disease, but a, a, uh, an emotional disorder with people cutting themselves. And this is particularly um, frequent with young ladies, particularly in their teenage years, early teenage years. And it's a sort of uh, a, a way that they deal with things. So if the devil can get us to cut ourselves, destroying the temple of God, then certainly piercings and tattoos would be right up there on the same par with that. Remember, this is an F in the devil. He was unsuccessful in destroying the temple in heaven. He was unsuccessful in destroying the temple on earth. Well, he went through the Romans and they destroyed it, but God and the Holy Spirit still dwell with us, so he wants to destroy our bodies. Let's continue here. Um, somebody may be asking, but I already have tattoos from years ago. And this is a good, good question. And actually, I get asked this question quite often. Look, we can't do anything about our past. We can ask for forgiveness. We can move on. And uh, there is an option to have the tattoos removed, but usually that is very, very expensive. And uh, it's just, it's unfortunately, it's just not practical for, for most people. So if you can have it removed, you may want to, but you know, let's say I have a tattoo, and uh, but I've moved into a relationship with Jesus, and I see, Jesus, and I see that's hurt uh, my body. Will God hold me accountable for tattoos in the past? And the answer is no. Just don't get any more tattoos. Ask for forgiveness. Move on. In fact, I knew one person one time when I was in school, and we were going out into the community just spreading the word of God, and my partner, he was a former gang member. He had tattoos on him, and he used that as a witness. He said, look, this is how, who I used to be, but God has brought me out of that lifestyle. So he was able to actually use those tattoos to show people that that's a lifestyle that he does not participate in anymore. So you may be able to win people to the Lord with that. Let's continue the next one. Uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not putting a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. So when we see somebody that has a tattoo, whether in the church or out of the church, do we judge them and assume they are lost and gone forever? Absolutely not. Look, sin manifests itself in many different ways. That could be a sin that was conquered years ago. I don't judge somebody and assume they don't have a relationship with God because they have a tattoo, but recognize that it doesn't please God. Just don't get any more tattoos. What about concentration camp tattoos? This is an important question that's come up in the past uh, also. They're, not all tattoos are done for vanity's sake. Not all tattoos are done uh, for... Uh, for selfish reasons or just for artwork or bringing attention to themselves. There have been people, uh, I knew someone one time that they tattooed, they had medical information tattooed on them. And for whatever reason, they were just very afraid if something happened to them, they, they knew the tattoo would be there and would give information to those that were, uh, to, the, to the medical people, doctors, if they needed to do something. People in concentration camps, they did not choose to have those tattoos on them. So remember, the principle of it is, what I choose to do, is it glorifying God or not? We can't do anything about the past or what people have forced us to do. So always, let's be moving on to the future. Let's look at the uh, next one that comes up here. Uh, what about medical tattoos? We've talked about that. There may be somebody that has uh, diabetes or some other medical condition that they just cannot take a risk on, some sort of allergy or something. Um, 
I, again, this is the small percentage. I would say most people that have tattoos aren't tattooing medical information on them. But the principle is what we're looking at. John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So this is the key here. We ought to be looking for ways to please God, to follow God, not looking for ways to slip through the cracks, not looking for ways not to please God. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've had piercings in my past also. When I was in elementary school, I had a uh, earring in my left ear, and by the grace of God, he allowed that sucker to get so infected that I could not ha have it anymore. I had to pull it out. Then I, as I was a little older in my as early 20s, late teenage years, uh, I, I, for some reason I thought it was a good idea to have a lip piercing right here. And that lasted about three days because I realized it was uh, uncomfortable, it hurt, and it didn't even look good. So look, we, we've all made mistakes. We've all done things we probably would rather have not have done. I could take the piercings out. And if you can do that, maybe you want to do that to glorify God. Maybe you want to cover your tattoos up. Maybe you want to use them to glorify God. But as of this point, we want to follow the shepherd wherever he leads us, and that is Jesus. And he's probably not leading us to tattoo shops and, and piercing pagodas to, get, to do more damage to the temple of God. So, let's address the question from the beginning. The Bible says not to draw attention to ourselves like makeup. And by the way, let me just pause there. You know the first person in the Bible that was uh, identified as wearing makeup? I'll pause for a second for you to think. The first person the Bible mentions that put on makeup was Jezebel. She put on makeup, painted her face, and she died. Fell out a window, or went out a window and died and was eaten by dogs. So Jezebel was not known for being the most humble, uh, godly person. It was all an attention to draw attention to herself. Now, what about um, people that have skin conditions, burn victims, things like that? And I'll be honest with you, I'm wearing makeup right now. We have to in the studio. It has to deal with light reflection and blowing out the exposure on the cameras. Um, and there's the why we're doing it, though. So, I'm, you don't see me putting on lipstick and rouge and everything else to draw attention to myself. So, we want to look at the principle of it. What am I doing? To, am I leading people to Christ or away from Christ with what I'm doing? So, the Bible says not to draw attention to ourselves like makeup, jewelry, stylish clothes, but what, what about, uh, but what's alarming me is I have tattoos. What do I do now? Is God going to hold me responsible? And we serve a loving, powerful God, and he tells us very clearly in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is not a thing you have done that God cannot forgive. There is not a thing you have thought that God cannot forgive. Well, there's only one thing that he cannot forgive, and it's the thing that you don't ask him to forgive. And by the way, continue to look for um, Behold the Savior in the future because we're going to have an entire message coming up on the unpardonable sin. And continue to send in your questions and comments through Facebook. We like answering them like this and give, them, give you the attention that you deserve on your, on your questions. Next week, we're going to be looking at the Nephilim. What does the Bible say about giants in the Nephilim? Did angels... Uh, have sexual relationships with humans. And then after that, recently, I, uh, me and my family just went to the new uh, Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. I'm going to give a little brief report on that and, and explain the, the pros and cons about it. So continue to look back for us Tuesday mornings at 1130 for Bible Study Live. Uh, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for what the Bible says. We thank you so much for leading us and guiding us into uh, a holy relationship, a, a better way of living. God, we ask that you would forgive us of sin, that you would cleanse us, and that you would always continue to strengthen our relationship with you. And we thank you and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be sure to like and 
Share what you're learning on social media. Visit and like us on Facebook. Visit and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Visit and subscribe to the website at beholdthesavior.com. Thank you, and God bless.